welcome back. Later on, I catch up with the floral designer and Sam Hands with Crooks International. At some stage in our lives, we've all lost a loved one. But who's there to aid us through the journey of death? <gasps> well, usually, it's the funeral director. So let's meet one to find out what they do and why it's so important. Karen, you're coming with me, I'm too scared! <laughs> Have a seat, have a seat. Thank you, brother. We all know and love you as Inga the Winger, and now you're a funeral director. Why did you get into it? I suppose for me, in 2003, 10 of my friends passed away. There was something really missing, and that was that personal touch and understanding, not only just the um, what they're going through in loved ones, but certainly the protocols of the Pacific Island people who, who mourn and grieve differently to that of Europeans. And me being Pacific Islander, I thought it would be an opportunity to uh, embrace the families and, and help them walk through that journey. And you're dealing with the dead. Is it a scary job? No. This is my calling, and to be able to comfort people in their time of need. Wow. Well, <laughs> Corinne and I would love to hang out with you today, Inga, yeah. and see what you do as a funeral director. Can we do that? Oh, it'd be my privilege. Can I ride shotgun in the hearse? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> We're here at your funeral home, Twingamala and Sons. What services do you provide for families? Well, this is where I like to think that this is a one-stop shop. So this is where the, the room where families can spend a bit of private time with their loved ones, but also a chance for them to dress their loved ones. Because, you know, us as Pacific Islanders, we love to, to touch and, and, to, and to kiss our, our loved yeah. ones. Do you think it's important for funeral directors to understand the traditions and customs when it comes to a Polynesian funeral? Oh, it's crucial. I feel honoured to be a Pacific Island that I can deal with my own people and have that, that just that understanding to be able to when to be involved and when to pull back. Um, and, and, and it can be quite emotional sometimes. Do you still cry? Oh, definitely. I, I, I'm a very emotional person and it's important that I got to check myself all the time because I've got to be a pillar of strength for the families at the yeah. same time. So part of your job as a funeral director is to actually physically handle the bodies. Yeah, you make it look like it's a real <laughs> scary yeah. thing, Sam. I'm still overwhelmed, I'm still yeah. trying. You know, this is... This I'm still trying to think he was lying on you. This is all part of, of, of the privilege that I have. Yeah. Being, and families being able to open their, their, their homes and their, and their hearts to to, towards me and my and my company. What happens after this? And after this, they by that time, they've really chosen a casket. And then from there, we actually go out to the, the chapel and they have that time with them by cool. themselves. So should we keep on moving? Definitely. Right. It's getting creepy in here. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a very emotional time for families and we just let the family do their last respects here. What's your role at this stage? I just remove myself. You know, because there's really nothing more that I can do here. How do you view death, Inga? Yeah, I, I see that uh, since being involved in the industry, we're not invincible, we're not immortal. You know, we're, we're here one moment and gone the next. I love you, Karen. <laughs> I love you too, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Inga, how do you pick the perfect coffin for someone who's passed away? Well, I don't choose the casket. Um, that is totally up to the, to the family. There are cases where families said, oh, I want that one. And I said, oh, well, um, mum's not going to fit in that one. Because <laughs> mum is it's a bit bigger than, than that one. It's but they said, no, yeah. no, no, we want that. And so the adamant. And so what do I do? But there's only when they were trying to bring, put mum into the casket and then she's like this. <laughs> she's squashed up. And, squashed. I, and I said, I told you. <laughs> Inga, once the families have paid their respects here at the chapel, where does the journey end for their loved ones? One that's at the cemetery. Well, Sam and Corin, well, we're at the cemetery. The very, very last part and the very last act there's a, and not only just funeral direct, but it's for families to say their last goodbyes to their loved ones. So. Inga, is there a special way you say goodbye? Yes, sir, I do, actually. Um, I've got uh, doves. It signifies the spirit of your loved one and that uh, one day there's a bit of hope at the end of it all and that yeah. uh, you look forward to meeting them one day in heaven. So, uh, 
and it's being able to release their spirit back to the Lord. Well, thank you so much, Inga, for showing us what's involved in your role as a funeral director and for taking us onto that journey from life to death. And this $100 voucher from Jeans West, just log onto our website and answer this question. Ooh. How many crooks from Crooks International are here at the Fale? Ooh. After the break, I meet a floral designer and Crooks International are in the Fale. Ooh.